It's a weekend of car shows. Stick around, I'll tell you all about it. Welcome back and thanks for being here. My name is Scott and it's kind of noisy, so I'm not sure how my audio quality is here. Uh, I am at Winterfest. Wait, that's not right. Volksfest? No, oh, I'll flash it up on the screen here. I'm probably wearing a t-shirt. But anyway, it's a weekend. Uh, today's Saturday and Volksfest, I believe is what it's called, is uh, uh, all Volkswagen and predominantly air-cooled. So there are I think over 200 cars here and the majority of them are air-cooled there are some uh, water-cooled cars here and here modern cars and then tomorrow will be Eurofest which is all euros and uh, I think that will be dominated by Volkswagens as well but more water-cooled I'm really not sure because it's the first year they've done it so let me give you a walkthrough tour and I will do a voiceover hopefully for better audio so here I am, I'm walking through the front door. Got to give you the illusion that I walk through the front door instead of driving through the back. And uh, this is what the spectators see when they walk in. Got a couple of Myers Manx over here. Here is a, uh, a camper. Is that a Westphalia? I'm not quite sure. But uh, anyway, as I walk along this way, you can see uh, Charles, the humble mechanic. There is his blue Mark 8 Golf R and the yellow uh, Mark 7.5 Golf R behind it. Uh, here's another look at the Myers Manx. I didn't really get a close-up look at them. You see the sparkly blue one here has a winch on it and unfortunately I can't tell you much more about it. And then the orange one here is set up. Uh, both of these two uh, cars were trailered in. And here is Paul from Deutsche Auto Parts. This is his Mark 8 GTI, and here is uh, Charles's uh, Mark 8 Golf R, and uh, here's a look at it from the back. I actually met both of them, uh, and Charles came back and took a look at my car. <laughs> he was pretty impressed with the setup. He learned a little bit about ham radio and what I do with the car, uh, so it was a pleasure to meet him. I had to shoot the Baja. I've always had a soft spot for Bajas, and uh, Carmen Gaius have never they, they weren't really popular when I was growing up, but they they just might be the best out of all those air-cooled cars, the most sporty looking. Uh, the off-roader in me has always been a fan of the Thing, that's what that one's called. And this one is, uh, I think it's a, a transporter, a dual cab, I think they might call that. And when I shot this video, I wasn't even paying attention to how many windows this bus has on it, but. The number of windows and fold eyes that it has makes it really valuable. And then there is a uh, pop-top camper. Uh, beautiful restoration here on this car. In fact, so many beautiful, beautiful Volkswagens in here. Uh, for the most part, I didn't even notice a lot of what I was looking at. There was a, um, a split window in here someplace. Maybe we'll spot it in the video. And there was an oval window or two. Now somebody here was, uh, see the tarp there, the canopy, uh, he was selling those and he makes them. They are they're waterproof, people camp in them even, and uh, they stay dry and warm. Uh, here is another beautiful restoration. I'll give you a, a higher shot of it here in a second. I don't know what year any of these cars are, it's not my specialty. I had, my very first car was a uh, 74 Beetle. Here is another uh, bus and another Baja. I, I love Bajas. Now, I don't know if you noticed, but um, I think I've already shared uh, an engine shot from one of these Beetles and or the Carmen Ghia. And it's, it's kind of low lighting in here. And so once I saw how poor the engine bay shots were coming out i just stopped walking and, and recording the backs of the cars because there's there's just no detail to see in there here's charles's mark 7.5 golf r and here's another bus uh, something i want to point out about the buses it's really nice it was really nice for me to see some restored because quite frequently it, the shows that i go to they're well they're kind of like this one here um, I don't want to say these are junky. Uh, well, that one there certainly is not. There's Diana walking toward me. 
the buses that I see most often are not restored at all. They're kind of beat up a little bit. And I had always wondered if um, a quote-unquote ugly bus with original paint was more valuable one, than one that's been restored. Comment below if you know the answer to that. I know the patina look is in and popular, but uh, seeing these restored buses was really cool for me. I like the buggy there. Now there are over 200 cars in attendance. And uh, oh, I like this Baja here. Is that a Baja? I think it is. I think it's a uh, kind of a softer version of a Baja that looks a little bit more streetable. Anyway, there were over 200 cars in attendance and uh, they gave out awards for the top 40. And there's a lot of nice cars here. Now, the challenge with showing cars like this one here, this uh, uh, GLI, it's beautiful, but he doesn't have the hood or doors open, so you don't know if anything inside is clean. And um, I don't know if that car won anything in the top 40 or not, but uh, that makes a big difference. This car here, I met the owner uh, after the show. Uh, basically, this kid and his dad, I think, built it together. You can see pictures of what it looked like when they got started, and uh, he built a yacht, um, a bomb. Uh, this one here, I think, is great for, uh, say, sand, and I think they have taken it in the sand. Not, it's not a mudder. <laughs> you wouldn't want to mud that thing, but it's, it's probably fantastic in the sand. So here is uh, another transporter. I don't know what they would call the ones with uh, dual, dual rows. And then here's one with the patina look that I was talking about. And again, I don't know how much of this was intentional, uh, if it's more valuable in that in that state than if it was restored. I, I'm really not sure. But again, I, I really like seeing the restored ones. Uh, beautiful Beetle here. I don't know what this car here is. Somebody comment if you know. I had no idea what it was. Lots of very nicely done cars. It's a fairly good looking Jetta with a wrap. Now I met this couple here. These two cars here are a uh, husband and wife team. So this is a Golf R. They really like their neon lights. And when we get around to the back, you'll see they've got uh, uh, subwoofer setups in the car. All right, so here we are looking at the back of this car. So this is a, a GTI, I think a Mark 7. And uh, yeah, she loves the thing. And then she's got her little, uh, I think they're eight inch drivers back there. And then uh, her husband, oh, and I love these bars that they have to hold the doors just right to where they're not too wide and not too narrow. Her husband's got a couple of tens back there and he was really interested in my rear seat delete. So I, I might be hearing from him in some, at some point in the future. Uh, to see how he can build one of his own. Nice little buggy there. Rag top. Here's one of these uh, patina cars that I was talking about with the air conditioner on it even. I don't know if that one was an oval window or not. I wasn't paying attention. Now this car here, <laughs> it, it might make you cringe and it's, I like it. Uh, what he did is he put um, Tiguan springs on it and I think all track shocks to give it a lift and then he has all terrain tires on it. If I make you cringe by towing trailers with my car, I think I'd really make you cringe if I put a lift on it. But uh, I don't know, a lift might give me something that I want, I'm not sure. The bed's not quite as functional as I thought it would be when I first saw it. The engine's kind of in the way. So check out this car. This is a uh, Japanese market beetle. 
So it's a right, or excuse me, yeah, it's a right hand drive. So right now he's talking about the challenge of driving it with the blinker stalks and everything on the wrong sides. And then check out this trailer. It connects at two points on the back of the car and it swings with the car and so the, the back wheel supports it but then it sways back and forth as the car turns. It's kind of interesting. More buses. Uh, I love these restored buses. I, I'm not saying that I'm not fond of the rusted out buses, but I see them so frequently, I have begun to wonder if uh, restored buses existed anywhere other than California where they don't rust in the first place. So here's a rusty sample here with <laughs> very pretty chrome and wheels on it. So again, are these more valuable when they are left with original paint? Uh, comment below. Is it? I think that's a B5 Passat. That's before the B5.5 facelift that I had, uh, my wife had. Here's a car. Uh, it won a uh, rat rod, which he does not consider it a rat rod. It's a chop top, and I think it's been stretched, but he doesn't consider it to be a rat rod. So, uh, cool conversion. Another Carmen Ghia. Sometimes you'll see some weird camera work out of me, like what I'm doing right here, and it's because I'm maneuvering around uh, other, other uh, showgoers, trying to avoid getting them in the shot. Very beautiful red. It's very well maintained or applied, I don't know. There's an old Mark I for sale. I think he was asking $3,000 for that. Now you think I'm crazy with Mark Cargo? Look at that, he's carrying a canoe up there. Oh, Dad had one of these long, long ago. Uh, type 3, I think it's called. A type 3 square back. First time I saw a car that had an engine under the trunk floor. I didn't even notice these earlier. <laughs> I don't know what this thing is. I'm sure it's here because it's VW powered. It probably started off as a sand rail. Nice little Mark I GTI. Might have been a rabbit. Again, I'm walking backwards to avoid some people. <laughs> ah, nice car there, I like that. Big crowd of people, so I'm gonna have a hard time getting around them. And, and this is another reason why I don't uh, record in the back very much. Here's a better look at this thing here. Uh, I don't know what it was. Uh, like I said, I think it's a sand rail. And then he's just, I think he just made it look like an an apocalypse car. More buses? Is this original or did they make it look like that? I don't know. If that fade is a, a fashion statement or if they did that on purpose. Uh, comment below if you know if they do things like that on purpose. Uh, this car here, 
For a moment, I thought it might have been the genuine deal because it has the, the same license plates and everything. And so uh, I didn't talk to the owner, but I'm told that it's common for people to print up replicas and then just, uh, well, he drove there with it. So if they are replicas, then that might have been illegal. But you know, it was probably just a quick trip from the hotel. I still haven't noticed the split window or the oval window. I'm not looking very closely. And then Here we come. We're coming up on uh, Diana's car and my car. You can barely see the antenna standing up in the distance there. So uh, we are quite a ways in the back. It took a very long time to get all these cars inside the building that morning. And there's the uh, turbo upgrade that I bought for Diana. And then her little plaque that she won last year at this show. And my car. So uh, I'm going to give a quick walk around of the car. Uh, she asked me to do one for her too, so I'm going to walk around her car first because uh, some of these uh, showgoers were... I mean, they're, they're in my way, but I mean, come on, it's a car show. They're supposed to be around the cars checking it out. And so this was a point where nobody was near the cars. Very convenient to do a video walk around. And Diana's doors are closed. And so um, I don't remember why she chose to leave them closed, but, you know, it's, it's her display. She's got a little bit of stuff in the trunk there. In retrospect, not a uh, an organized theme. So maybe that'll, I'll give her some feedback on that. Uh, she might have gained more points or done better with a theme. Now here's me. I'm a little all over the place as well. Uh, engine bay shot. Uh, poor lighting inside the building here, so it's not really that bright under the hood. And I think I want to do something different with that display because the fonts are all too small, a little hard to read. Uh, I'll come up with something. I had a bigger display that worked under my Jetta, my Mark III, because I could open the hood taller. So inside here, I've got my communications exhibit. It has my parks on the air log work here. A YouTube page pulled up just to have the display going. And there's my two radios and two microphones. There's actually three radios turned on in the car at this moment. There's my fridge. And I have these uh, placards on the car about the antennas is what that says. Uh, same thing on either side. And my only regret about my setup is I really should have had one that says about ham radio or what is ham radio because a lot of people they didn't know what they were looking at and I, I didn't even think of that so uh, but oftentimes as soon as I said ham radio they're like oh yeah yeah gotcha so now here's my new battery setup with the schematic on it and some people were really intrigued by that this battery setup ran this entire exhibit for uh, all day Saturday, all day Sunday. Fridge was going as well. The lighting to help light all this stuff on the inside. And you can hear the radio going in the background. I had it scanning uh, the ham bands locally and the FRS and GMRS frequencies to see if it would pick up anybody chattering inside the show here. And it certainly did. All right, so continuing on with the next row, starting to get a little dark back here in the back of the uh, of the arena. That was a nice engine there, but again, uh, the lighting this this would have been way better outdoors. Uh, indoors is nice because, of course, it's uh, cold. It's February, so. Uh, we appreciate being indoors, but the, uh, everything would have been more visible. Here's another thing. I really like this one. And there's the backside of Herbie. So many beautiful cars here. And I think I'll share it later. Oh, there's a transporter with the canopy on it. And, and yeah, people sleep in these things. I was really surprised when I heard that. And these canopies don't link or anything. And that's cool. And we saw the front of this already. So I, I'll ask again, 
Uh, is this original paint or did somebody paint it like this and then fatigue it on purpose to give it a look? I like it, don't get me wrong, uh, but does that make it more valuable when it looks aged like that? Uh, perhaps keeping it aged is easier than keeping it beautifully polished. Uh, I know I can say that uh, it takes a lot of careful work to keep a paint job shiny and uh, free of squirrels. Now this here is the type of bus I'm used to seeing in my area. They're usually like this, they're not restored or anything. Uh, although he does have modern headlights on there, so, you know, again, why why do they do that? Not hating, I'm just trying to, to learn a little bit here. These are the cars that arrived late, <laughs> so they, they're they way, way, way in the back. Mark 6 GTI there. That is a nice restoration right there. I was talking about all these beautiful cars, and uh, later I will say in my wrap-up that I did take home a uh, Top 40 award from this show. And so over 200 cars in attendance, and you can see there's a lot of beautiful cars here. And the judges didn't even know how to judge my car because there was just so much going on there. But uh, they they still felt it was worthy of being in the top 40. So that's, uh, that's very nice. I really appreciate that. Getting to the back of the back of the room here. This video uh, is turning out to be quite long, and so I'm not sure if I'm going to keep everything that I'm showing you here, because uh, I'm looking at about 45 minutes. <laughs> Lots of Carmen Gaia's here today. There's a sand rail. Now tell me what this is in the back, what's powering this. I'm not sure what kind of engine that is. Now this car, this one was a bit of a mystery. I had no idea what it was, so uh, I walked up and took a look at it. I had no idea what a Brasilia is or was. Now, this is a 1981 Brasilia. I looked at this plate here and I didn't recognize that. It turns out that that is a state in Mexico. I don't know all the Mexican states. I'm familiar with uh, Chihuahua, because it's right across the border from El Paso, but, but that's it. Uh, so even this plate here, I, I had no idea that this was a Mexican state. And so the owner, I, I found him, he was right next to me here, and I asked him about the car. Uh, so he told me it was a Mexican uh, car, and it basically has all the underpinnings of a Beetle. So air-cooled engine, uh, the pans, I think he said the pan is the same, so a lot of it is all exactly the same. It's just in a different package. So at the end of the show, we wrapped up and uh, people who were not spending the night left. The rest of us moved our cars closer to the front. So here I am on day two. This one is Eurofest. It's raining outside, but I got to keep my car nice and clean inside overnight. It was still pretty from the day before. And as you can see here, I am parked much closer to the front. Uh, Diana is not with me though. She bailed and got herself into a position of honor of sorts with the Lost Boys. We'll uh, catch up with them in a little bit uh, today. Uh, all European cars and it is uh, dominated by Volkswagens. Statistically, Volkswagens are the most plentiful European car in America. So here's a nice sample here, uh, right up in front. Got us uh, an Audi, I think that's an A4, I'm not sure. And then this here is the only BMW that I remember seeing at the show. This is a Harlequin Polo. And this is a factor. We have a lot of uh, quote unquote fake Harlequins 
Uh, the real ones were made this way at the factory. You can see it's got a body, a uh, teal colored body, and then different panels uh, bolted onto the car. And this happens in production. So this is the way this car was delivered from the factory. They did it with the Polos and the Golfs. Uh, here is a Porsche. A very, very beautiful car. Some of these uh, Volkswagens, these air colds, were present yesterday at uh, yesterday's event, the Winter Volks Fest. I may remove some of these cars to shorten the video. Here's a Mercedes. Because uh, again, some of these cars were here yesterday, or I may just go ahead and share them and leave the video nice and long. <laughs> This will be the closest I can give you to being as if you were there yourself. This Mark One from yesterday. A beautiful car. And then here's me again, closer to the front. I'm not going to do another walk around. You saw what it looked like yesterday. It looks exactly the same. Here is a um, Mark IV Jetta TDI. He's got a lot of cool plans for that car. Here's an all track, it's been lowered. Here's the thing from yesterday. Again, this GLI, beautiful car, but not really gonna be a show winner with everything buttoned up like that. I think maybe a lot of these guys are just uh, attending the show the same way that I did. Um, you get a great parking spot, you support the club that is sponsoring the event, and uh, I guess you get to keep your car, well, eyes on the car. I used to do that for my um, TDI because back when I was showing it, nobody had seen TDIs before. So here's my daughter's car. It's in a place of uh, honor, I think. It's off away from everybody else. It's in the aisle. Uh, I'm best in a chops right now about having the hood down instead of all the way up. Because I've always been, I've always learned that uh, you keep the hood up as high as you can so that judges can see that the engine bay is clean. Yet when you swing around to this guy here, the owner of the Lost Boys uh, organization, his hood is not all the way up. Yet he won uh, something. I don't know if it was best of show or if he was in the top 25, but he got something. And then here is that lifted GTI again. Uh, cringe all you want, I kind of like it. I'm not sure why. I may do it when it's time to replace my suspension just to do something different. I make it cringe when I tow trailers. Why not make it cringe with that? But it would slow the car down a little bit. Uh, this SQ5 won something as well. And I don't know if it was broken ship or top 25 or what, but uh, I do remember her going up and getting an award. This is a setup that, uh, you know, it, it, it would benefit a lot from interior lighting, shining on those speakers so that you can see everything really well. There's another Audi, and uh, this red GTI, very nicely maintained red. Red is a very difficult color to maintain, red and black. Now this car here, um, I really felt like it was a contender for um, best of show. As I looked at it, 
I just could not believe that it would be driven in the rain ever. It is so clean and detailed. Um, but sure enough, I learned that the guy had driven in the rain that morning. In fact, uh, when we swing around the back here, you'll see some puddles. He has him a Grim Reaper theme going on here, and you can see the water that had dribbled out from under it from him drying uh, the car and then the underbody training. Uh, that's a casket made up in there, very hard to see. Again, interior lights would be great for illuminating stuff like that. And uh, uh, my display does have some lighting. Here comes Diana. Here we have a Alfa Romeo. We were taking inventory of all the different European cars that showed up. And so we had uh, Volkswagens, very, uh, very obviously, Audis, at least one BMW, at least one Mercedes, and uh, then this Alfa Romeo. And I was trying to think of other European makes that might have shown up for this, but didn't. No Fiats were there. And uh, you know, Fiat's are relatively uncommon in the U.S., but no, uh, no uh, minis, not a single mini was present. And I, I would have thought that they would have come out in force. So, uh, you know, marketing, it's a brand new show. Very nice Audi. I, I wish I could just say that this was an S4 or something, but I, I honestly don't know. This car here caught my eye. This must be the uh, the newest model of uh, a Passat. That be a B a B8. Is it a B8 Passat? I, I've lost track. I haven't been watching, but that looks like Reflex Silver, which I think has been discontinued on the GTI. Um, I like it. Not not a fan of the wing on the back there, but uh, the lines are nice. That's a good looking wrap there. Mark 6 GLI. And then the Mark 7 GLI, right? Isn't that what that is? Uh, oh, Passat GT. Yeah, Passat GT. Good looking car. Apparently, there was only a uh, handful of these cars made. I don't know if this badge was added by the owner or if Volkswagen labeled them like this. So if Volkswagen labeled them, I don't know, then, then that's how he knows. But if they didn't, then how did he know? So that's pretty cool that he was able to uh, get that label in there. I like how this license plate says, tasteful.
I lose track of whether or not these are Passat or Jettas. I met this guy. I actually drove on the back of a dragon with him, uh, what, in 2020, after our road trip to uh, California. So that was a good, fun time. Cool dude. His car is also a 2017, but I don't remember how many miles it's only he has. Not nearly as many as I do, though. Oh, look at that. Reflex Silver on a GLI. So maybe Reflex Silver is not discontinued by Volkswagen. It's just no longer on the GTI, and that kind of stinks. But I think they brought it back on the Mark 8. Yeah, because they couldn't find the All right, now you can see we're at the back of the uh, venue here, and this place isn't even, it's not even halfway full. It might only be a third full, because there's 60 cars there, and the day before there was over 200, so uh, now this is kind of reaching the end. I think I just have to visit some corners here, and that'll be about it. I'd love to share the discussions with you that I'm having as I walk around, but there's music and I'm not doing any copyright strikes with uh, YouTube, so uh, yeah, I'm not giving them any satisfaction. I'm not sure if this is an SQ5. I think there were a couple of them there. That's an SUV I'd love to have. It's uh, powerful, fast, and uh, I could take it in some dirt, light off-roading. Tow a trailer with it, light trailer. Here's a tool rig, all set up for off road and some camping. It's a pretty good following of, uh, it's called Bag Off Road in Instagram. So a lot of these older tour rigs and uh, Porsche, what is that, the Cayenne? It's the equivalent, it's the Porsche equivalent of this SUV and they, they outfit them for off-roading. And then finally, here's the uh, Audi R8. And that's my walkthrough, so let me go ahead and pass you over to the wrap. Winter Volks Fest, as I learned it was properly called, uh, that, that show went very well. My first indoor show, I think it's my third show with this car, second show with the uh, ham radio exhibition, and um, lots of interest. I need to do a better signage uh, I wanted to make a sign that's, you know, it's basically a placard that says what is ham radio or what is amateur radio is the official term for that. And that, because um, that's the question I got asked most, what is all of this for? Some of them, as soon as I said, oh, it's ham radio, they, they knew. But uh, a lot of people did not know what ham radio is. Anyway, uh, yeah, we, uh, we, we did the show, had a good time. There were over 200 cars in attendance. Lots and lots of them were air-cooled cars, old vintage cars. The way they gave out the awards, they did top 40, probably best engine, best interior, best workmanship, um, best of show. 
there's others, I just can't remember them. And so I was kind of pleasantly surprised to get one of the top 40 awards. And top 40 out of over 200 cars is uh, a pretty good honor. My daughter, Diana, was uh, at my car when the judges came by and it was kind of funny. She says that they just looked at it and they said, I, I don't even know how to judge this because <laughs> there's just so much going on with my car. And, um, and then that, yeah, so it's, that's, that's how that went. And then at the end of the show, we all pulled in and we all came in through a, a garage bay door, which was at the back of the building. And since Diana and I stayed for the, um, the following day, our cars got to stay there. I don't know if you can tell or not, but it's raining and uh, today was a rainy day, but I'll get back today in a minute. We stayed overnight, and so then, since our cars never had to go back outside, we then got moved to the front. My wife came down from Virginia, almost solely to uh, uh, to be our chauffeurs to the hotel <laughs> so that we could leave our cars in, because the following day, Sunday today, was forecast for rain. and. One of the reasons, perhaps the key reason why I showed my car at Winter Volksfest, my plan was just to go to Eurofest, which was today. And, but then I saw that rain in the forecast and I'm die hard enough to, to use a waterless wash on the car. I would have left a hotel, driven to the nearest car wash that I could see, blast off any heavy grit or anything that might've collected on the car, then driven gently to the to the show venue and then did a waterless wash to finish off i i would have made it work but when i found out that i could leave the car inside overnight that that just kind of sealed it for me so that's what i did we both did and um we got moved right on up to the front i was in the second row she was right beside me but then made friends with uh the founders of a of a small group of car enthusiasts known as the Lost Boys. Once she connected with them, because um, there's a lot of marine uh, presence in uh, the Lost Boys, and when they found out that she was that she's a marine, they invited her over, and so she got to go park over by their tent, almost as um, a, a special exhibit. Because the way she was parked, she wasn't in a row; she was off at an angle, almost by herself, and. Um, yeah, it was a place of prestige for her car. And uh, and then we left, went out to dinner with my wife. We went out as a family. I haven't done that in a little while. Spent the night in a hotel, and then this morning came back to the venue. My wife, by the way, did show up early enough to walk around and see all the vintage Volkswagens. And then she hung out long enough to see all of today's entries. So today was Eurofest. Now, there were only about 60 cars in attendance. The rain scared off some of them. Uh, jokingly, I mean, the water-cooled crowd tends to be a little younger than the vintage crowd. And um, the organizers recognized uh, two things, three things maybe. Uh, first, it's a brand new show. Word might not be out yet that this show is there, highly publicized. It's not highly publicized because it's a new show. Uh, second, it's raining and that scares people off, both in attendance and showing, because a lot of people don't like to clean up their cars and then trash it on the way to the venue. Third, because the water-cooled crowd is a little younger and uh, younger people like to sleep in and so they don't want to roll in at 8.30 in the morning, especially if they need to prep a car. And uh, am I stereotyping? I don't know, but it is a fact that these event organizers recognize and the same went with the crowds. The crowds were very slow to come in. Uh, the, the venue was open to spectators at 10 and they started kind of rolling in, you know, around noon or one o'clock. And you got to figure that uh, there are churchgoers in the area too. So a lot of people go to church uh, Sunday mornings and, um, and then they come in after church or maybe after lunch. And so the crowds picked up after, after one o'clock or so and uh, it was good. Again, a lot of interaction with the car, with only 60 cars in uh, on the floor being shown, 
uh, judging went a lot quicker and there was only a top 25 spot and I don't know how close I was to being a contender but there was a lot of really nice cars there let's see there was a uh, top 25 uh, best of show best engine best interior best workmanship um, that went to a vintage car that had been restored uh, beautiful car and oh there was others uh, best air ride best mm, it wasn't called best stance best fitment that's what it was called best fitment yeah very very interesting cars there I, I I enjoyed it I enjoyed interacting with people I met a few people who are acquainted with me through Instagram I don't know if any of my YouTube followers were there but Instagram folks did come catch up with me I had some business cards there and so maybe uh, uh, maybe some people who swipe the business cards will send me an email message or comment on this video if they happen to check out my YouTube channel we'll see how that goes so uh, yeah so now I'm on the road I would have done more more commentating at the, at the venue but there was a lot of uh, music playing it was loud so that's a sound quality problem here uh, hopefully this background noise is not too terrible uh, but because of the music that's a copyright strike thing and I don't feel like dealing with YouTube or Warner's music group with their stuff uh, yeah so I just avoid all music except for the free stuff that YouTube lets us use the uh, approved by the overlords so yeah so here I am wrapping up from the road as always, I appreciate you being here, and I will see you next time. Take care.